Welcome to worship. It is a joy to be with you all this morning. My name is Reverend Lisa Barbary, and I have the privilege to be the pastor here, and I welcome you on behalf of our congregation. We hope you'll take time to fill out a Connect card that you can find a link for on Facebook or YouTube, and just make us aware of your presence. And you can also do this through the comment boxes on Facebook and YouTube, and it's a wonderful way that we can share in fellowship. So as we continue this, uh, this time together, I do want to just share that uh, you may find today's online worship experience to be a bit more simple. And this is because uh, we're into week 36, I believe it is, for online worship. And it's time for some of us who, who bring this service together week from week to have a bit of Sabbath. And so today we'll be missing our director of music ministries, Philip Higgins. And I know missing him one uh, week will make us even more grateful to have him back the next. But for today, uh, we will consider this a Sabbath Sunday just as it is and a simple Sunday. We still have the word of God and the message from God and music to be sung and prayers to be shared. And I pray that you will continue to find our online worship experiences to not just be engaging, but to be a source of blessing and upliftment to fill you and renew you for the week ahead and the work that God has for us ahead. So a couple of announcements, just a reminder that on Tuesday, November 24th, we'll have our uh, ecumenical community Thanksgiving service that Crooks is hosting. So you'll find that service at seven o'clock on Tuesday on Facebook or YouTube, and we'll be gathering with all the other churches that have played a part in that service. So it's an opportunity to fellowship, worship together, not just as Crooks, but with our brothers and sisters in York County. And then also uh, our Bible study begins that, that night as well. So we know there's a conflict with that and that's okay, but at six 30 p.m. is our uh, Advent study that begins on the book Incarnation by Reverend Adam Hamilton. Those books are available in front of the church if you want to pick one up to read, even if you're not participating in the study. And then, of course, we know next Sunday, we look forward to beginning our Advent journey, and we'll be utilizing Incarnation as we explore the various names and titles that the Gospels use to introduce us to Jesus as we explore the significance of Christmas once again. And so friends, lots of things to look forward to and coming up, so make sure you're getting your e-news or checking Facebook for announcements. If you're not getting those e-news, visit our website and you can sign up to receive those. Let us now prepare our hearts to worship God.
I invite you now into a time of prayer. This is an opportunity where you can share any joys or concerns that you have, and you can do so via the comment boxes if you want to lift those in the presence of our shared community today. I ask that you use first names to respect privacy, but let us be in a spirit of prayer joined by our hearts. Loving and gracious God, we continue to give thanks for allowing us to gather in this way. Oh Lord, we long to be together physically where we can hear our voices raised in song together, when we can share in fellowship and share in liturgy and, and truly share in the hearing and the receiving of your word. But we give you thanks that through technology and even being a screen or phone line apart that we can still be your gathered faithful disciples. We know that there is no bounds that keeps you from reaching us. And so we pray your spirit fall fresh upon us this day. May we hear your news and your word afresh. Lord, we lift to you all those for whom we have concern for or share in joy with. You know all needs before we speak them, but yet we're called to lift them so that our hearts might break more fully open for what breaks your heart and that you can use this time to empower us and to lead us to be your hands and feet in the world. And so, Lord, meet each at their greatest point of need. Provide your balm of healing or mercy or love wherever it is needed in brokenness and grief and illness. And we rejoice for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is indeed our Lord, our Savior, our King. May we hear once again how it is that you desire for the Lord, our, our, our Savior, the Lord, our King, to reign in our lives. Move us this day. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading today is from Colossians 1, 11 through 20. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood on his cross. In 1925, Pope Pius IX 
began what is known as the Feast of Christ the King. It began in the Catholic Church, but over time it, it found its way into other faith traditions and especially Protestant denominations like ours. And there's different reasons given for the explanation for why it began, but in a, in a brief explanation, it's a strong reminder that Christ is Lord above all other commitments that we have in our lives. And this reminder was important at the time, and it's still important for us today. We refer to it as Christ the King Sunday, and it falls at the end of the Christian calendar year. And so today is the last day of the year. Next year, or next week, we begin Advent, and that begins a new year in the life of the church. And we know that Advent is meant to be a time of waiting, a time of waiting for Christ's return. And it orients us, all of this, to our call as Christians to, to live under the lordship of Christ, our King, rather than anything else. And so we hear in the Colossians passage from today, an understanding that when we become a Christian, that we're not meant to just fit Jesus into our present way of thinking or present way of being, but rather we're transferred into a whole new way of being. And it's a transfer that means that Christ should be the source of our perspective and shape our view of the world, our life, and one another. And this, of course, can only happen if we give our full commitment and allegiance to Christ, that we allow Christ, our Lord and Savior, to reign in our lives, in our hearts, and in our minds. It means to see Christ as our King. And that can feel a little strange because we're not familiar with what it means to have a king in our life. But of course, we know that Christ is not a king like a king in worldly terms. And this is what our scripture also points to today. Because the text reminds us who Christ is and what Christ has done and his kingship over all of creation. And so here, here are some reminders from our Colossian passage today. That Jesus rescues us from the control of darkness, and that he transfers us to the kingdom of God, and that in Christ we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins, that through Christ all things can be reconciled to God. We know that all things were created through him and, and for him, and that they're held together by him, that he is in all things before all things and above all things, that Jesus is the head of the church, this is not our church. This is the Lord's church. And we, we are the body of Christ. And Christ should have first place in, 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 in everything that we do, reigning in our life as Christ the King. But again, Christ is different than an earthly king or, or leader. Instead of power or force or control, Jesus models servant leadership a leadership out of love, the greatest act of, of Christ being his willingness to sacrifice himself for us all. And then we remember that God's people were looking for a king. They knew that the Messiah would come as a king, but just not as they expected. They were looking for a king who would come and forcibly remove the powers that be, the Roman Empire. But Jesus instead came in humility and vulnerability. He offered forgiveness. He didn't offer retribution for those who stood against him or who betrayed him or who killed him. Jesus doesn't even offer us a, a better tomorrow necessarily, as many world leaders do, but rather offers to redeem us today and promise us, uh, promises us eternal life tomorrow. <sighs> And his kingdom is not like any other, any earthly kingdom. Earthly kingdoms are full of land and possessions and ambition and exclusion. And Jesus's kingdom is full of truth and love, compassion and mercy and relationship. Earthly kingdoms are ruled or at least held in esteem by their force, by their might, their riches, their self sufficiency, their strength. The kingdom of God is one where a crucified Christ reigns. In a kingdom where humility and kindness and grace, hospitality, self-sacrifice, interdependence, and solidarity with the suffering rules. 
As believers, we are transferred to the kingdom. It's not a yet to be, right? Because we know that the kingdom is here and now, but we also know the kingdom is still yet to come. But we experience it now. And Jesus called his disciples to follow him, to be a part of that kingdom, to take up their cross. And that is what is asked of us as well. As believers, we're called to become disciples with our full commitment and allegiance to Christ's reign in our life and the world. And that's an allegiance to the kingdom of God. Now, I've used this word allegiance a few times now, and I believe it's a a powerful word today. We might even call it a hot button word, if we're honest, because it's significant to what we're talking about today, but we recognize that the word allegiance also brings tension today, I think because there's differing reactions to it. There's disagreements about what pledging allegiance to something looks like and when you do what it actually means. And we're actually not always kind to others who feel differently than us on the matter. And so to put this in a little more perspective, consider, hot button, the pledge of allegiance to the flag or whether we sit or stand or kneel, all of which are signs of reverence for the national anthem. These are triggers for so many, and it can make it difficult for us to truly listen to one another. The judgment of who is and who isn't patriotic, if they say or don't say the pledge, whether they stand or not, these are judgments that are casted. Yet, what is it? that we're actually pledging allegiance to. I want to say that perhaps the most important consideration should be, do we spend more time concerned about the allegiance others are making to our flag or to our country than our own allegiance to Christ? Are we focused on someone else's allegiance to the flag or to our country more than we are on our own allegiance to Christ? Because that's supposed to be what's higher and greater and best not be confused with the other. It's made clear that through Christ and in Christ all things are made and all things are ruled and all things are reconciled. All. Not one country, not one subgroup of people. Christ is for all and Christ calls all to his kingdom. So we can choose and pledge our allegiance in the world and through our our deeds in this world and the things of this world where self-sufficiency and self-protection and consumerism and exclusion and idolatry and self-righteousness and concern for status and preservation reign. That's a lot. Or we can place our allegiance in the kingdom of God, promised to us and and offered to us here and now through the gift of Jesus Christ, a kingdom that calls us to a different way of being, a different way of being and a different way of being in relationship with God and to one another. So may it be that we live into the freedom and power and strength, as scripture tells us, that Christ provides us by following an example of servanthood, loving and serving our neighbors, listening, engaging, not judging, disagreeing, perhaps. So may it be that despite the current divisions and and vitriol that constantly flow through our news and our social media feeds and our conversations and even in our hearts, so may it be that we embody the kingdom, the kingdom values Jesus consistently modeled through his ministry and through his life. May we choose hope and mercy, forgiveness, grace, generosity, hospitality, welcome, love, kindness, compassion, empathy. So may it be that Jesus Christ is King and Lord of our lives rather than the ideals of some group or country, or career ladder, or pursuit of certain lifestyle, or the pressure to portray ourselves as something we are not. Because if Christ is our head, the body should follow. Christ gives us the power and strength to follow. All we have to do is claim him 
and allow him to reign fully in our lives. We have a God and King whose primary value is love. Thanks be to God. We have a King who created humankind in God's image and called us very good. We have a king who knows our pain, who walked in our shoes and showed us how to really love and be a part of God's kingdom, even, even when it's really hard and unpopular. We have a king who walks with us now and who promises that one day, all one day, that he will wipe away every tear, make all things new, and restore and redeem all of creation. Best of all, when we live with our allegiance to the kingdom of God, we are part of the work here and now. And that's what we say thanks be to God to. Amen. As we respond to today's message and word, I want to invite us into a time of prayer. But before we do, I also want to encourage you to reflect on how it is that you can truly allow God to reign in your lives and to even help be a source uh, to, to make decisions about how you use your time and your resources, your gifts, your abilities, your money. We, we call all of this our practice of generosity, how it is that we can use all that God has given us for God and for God's good purposes, how we can give back to God. Some of that we do by giving to the shared mission and ministry of this church financially and with our gifts and our time and our prayers and our presence. Now, we won't have our usual time offering today, but if you are needing information on how to make a financial gift to our shared mission and ministry, there'll be a a slide at the end of our service that provides that information. But right now, let us turn our hearts to prayer, and specifically a prayer for for our nation, as we reflect on what it truly means to live a life with Christ as our King. Today, our prayer comes to us in a visual format. Let us join our hearts together. Our Father in heaven, giver of all life and author of all things good, we entrust our great nation into your care, for it was you, our good shepherd, whom our founders followed. You are the creator and grantor of our cherished rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, all are forged by your loving grace. Guide our leaders in the paths of righteousness and justice. May their service to our nation be honoring to you, and may their decisions reflect your will. Remind us that true happiness is found only in Christ. Protect our men and women who fight for our freedom. Bless your church to shine and drive out the darkness in our cities. And remind us that your kingdom is not a red state, nor a blue state. Your kingdom is not of this earth. So we plead with you. Bring conviction to our hearts and revival to this land. Send your Holy Spirit to open our hearts and come dwell with your people. Today, we honor our Creator, our Lord, our Father. Thank you for your grace and blessings. May you continue to bless our great nation. We pray to you in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
Friends, may you go forth this day to allow Jesus our Lord to reign in your heart and in your lives. And may you also go forth this day ready to prepare to take our Advent journey this year, to be in a time of waiting and anticipation, to receive the Christ child anew once again, and to await the return of our King. Go now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.